we're going to talk um, in this lecture, the final lecture of Mecto 2, uh, about polymer yielding and some unique um, abilities or unique uh, characteristics of polymers yielding that may be a little bit different from the metallic yielding that you've uh, seen previously in Engine 45 and other materials courses. Um, specifically, we're going to talk about crazing and shear yielding um, and also some ideas of strain hardening, strain softening materials. So, but first to get us started, let's review some of our uh, old friends, our other yielding criterion that we've hopefully seen previously. So, uh, all the way up to this point, all of our mechanics lectures have just been in our regime one. So we've been dealing purely with elastic elasticity in some form or another. Anisotropic viscoelasticity, isotropic um, composite elasticity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we haven't uh, basically moved into plasticity, uh, which is where we go past our yield point, where we initiate the, dis the motion of dislocations um, or defect motion. Um, but one of the main questions we want to ask is whether we can predict whether materials will yield, especially when they're not, you know, if they're just loaded, um, you know, simply and uniaxially, you know, I have this loading state. I know that when my applied stress, sigma 1, 1 is greater than sigma y, then I'm going to yield. But what happens in a complex stress state? Well, we have multiple yielding criterion that we're going to talk about in this class to predict when a material is going to yield, specifically the ranking, the Tresca, and von Mises criterion. So, there's a kind of a cool but tragic history behind these yielding criterion, and really they develop these yielding criterion when there's a kind of catastrophic failure that occurs. Um, so the ranking criterion was the one that was first developed. Um, it's also known as the maximum normal stress criterion. And as you can see here, the prediction here for this ranking criterion is simply that when our maximum principal normal stress is greater than my yield stress, that material yields. Now, it's very, very important to note um, Sigma 1 is not the sigma 1 1. This sigma 1 is referring to the maximum principal normal stress. Again, confusing notation, but um, definitely please make sure to know that. So this criteria is uh, perfectly valid, but it failed to describe uh, basically how metals fail, because metals typically will fail when our shear stress is maximized. So you can see in this criterion, we're missing the ability to describe shear stress. So another criterion, Tresca, tried to take that into account. So the Tresca criterion is also called the maximum shear stress criterion because that yielding criteria will say, well, when my sigma 1 minus my sigma 3 is greater than my yield strength, then that's when that's going to fail. And if you remember back to our uh, Morse circle, we had kind of these three circles, some big one here, and these are supposed to intersect. <laughs> Let me draw that one more time. Here and here. So I had this. And let's say another circle like this, and another circle like this. And this is my sigma 1, this would be my sigma 2, and this would be my sigma 3. This is essentially taking into account sigma 1, my sigma 3, half of that is going to be where my tau max occurs. So my tau max is equal to sigma 1 over sigma, uh, minus sigma 3 divided by 2. So this is somewhat taking into account that maximum shear stress. But again, um, again that's the minimum principle of normal stress. But in 1913, for World War I and World War II subs, this criterion um, was a horrible, well, it was a very, very poor predictor for yielding. So instead, they developed the von Mises criterion. So von Mises criterion is the maximum shear deformation energy criterion. And you can see here uh, that this predicts, and actually it takes into account, basically all of the components in our stress tensor, as long as we're dealing with a homogeneous isotropic elastic material. Um, and I definitely use this equation instead. So here, if our sigma effective is greater than my yield stress, it fails. And you can look at kind of, again, in different regions, you know, some of these may, you know, again, here, we're still, we haven't failed for the von Mises criterion right here. Let's go back up here. So for von Mises here, we have not failed, but we have yielded uh, according to our Tresca and our ranking criteria as well. So again, depending on the stress state, you know, you could have a more, uh, you know, here, this is telling us that we fail according to, again, that uh, ranking criteria. So depending on that criterion, you could either be a more conservative or um, a more risky uh, estimate of whether materials will yield. So those are just your traditional yielding criterion, and you'll see that a lot, especially if you do FEM analysis. But the key thing is you want to predict or actually you know, know all these different criteria and justify why did you use this material? Like, do you have all these other components of stresses? Are you, are you sure that, you know, uh, which criterion is most appropriate for you to utilize. 
So typically von Mises is uh, used for most materials, but again, ranking could be used um, as well for a lot of ceramic materials. Tresca um, can be used for a lot of metallic materials, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It depends on the stress state and the material that you're working with. So make sure that you know that. So that's kind of a uh, scroll down memory lane. And next time in the next video, we're going to get into really cool and unique uh, polymer yielding mechanisms, specifically crazing and shear banding. So I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks.